So I, I think we're all aware at this point that I don't change things <laughs> somewhat to my detriment. I don't change things until I have a problem. And uh, <clears throat> I've had a lot of ideas kind of floating around and have not yet had the uh, serious problem that makes me push forward into something new. And uh, I might have just had that problem or might have run into that problem. So I have a, a, I've been shooting my bow and learning and adjusting because I'm still pretty new to archery. And uh, I made some sight, I made some rest actual changes uh, yesterday and shot, I guess, probably around 50 times, maybe closer to 100, I'm not sure. And it's, I figured, you know, neck, back muscles, neck muscles, you know, something will get sore like that. Absolutely no problems. Or neck is a little stiff, but that's about it. But uh, one thing I had not foreseen was wrist. So, I'm, uh, I'm going to be taking it easy on my wrist <laughs> for a few days. And uh, putting this on reminded me that I have... It's really obvious. I, I didn't really expect the typing action to translate into... Because it, it wraps around your wrist and it just... It, it pulls, basically. Uh, but it is essentially 70 pounds on your wrist uh, or during the draw. So, I don't know. Maybe I should just back the whole thing off. So, Anyways. The point, <clears throat> the point is I'm going to try to wear this for a while. And I'm remembering that typing with this is not fun. Uh, because I kind of have to, I can't really correct with bending my, or with moving, rotating my wrist rather than my, my full forearm. So I've been thinking, I've, my first thought is to get the tenting working. <clears throat> so in order to get the tenting working, I have a, like a, a hack job tent that I've been working on for a while. And I realized that I can set the, set it up so that it has a, um, What's it called? Uh, a thing. Uh, two pieces. I, I've been having trouble fitting two halves together. I probably should just use a standard fitting and then it would work just fine, but whatever. The, the, I can 3D print bases, but I can only 3D print them in two pieces and then connect them. And they haven't been connecting as solidly as I would like. Uh, but in this split idea, it's it doesn't really matter actually because you can print one half and then print the other half. And that'll make a little... I don't know if it'll make like an outcropping on one side for the uh, for the controller or or have the controller just be like floating in the middle. Uh, because it'll probably still be, you know, close together. It'll just be raised up. So like, like this. <clears throat> and I realize that I do kind of correct by typing like this. So I, I kind of come in at an angle anyways, uh, which is probably less than ideal, but that's the way I type. Uh, so with this, it'll be a little bit more obvious that that's not correct. <laughs> uh, but the idea is basically, I mean, it's very simple. You just, you take the board, you take your signum, and you take your hacksaw, and uh, combine uh, aggressively. <laughs> You just cut the board down the middle and actually have a, uh, not a, I have that adapter board that would be a great candidate for setting up some header pins and just free wiring header pins straight into the teensy. Yeah. If I, well, I might do a, a no, that's the right way, way to do it, okay. So the two halves, basically, we'll just need a base that has whatever angle of incline. And then that angle of incline, uh... Yeah, the base will... Yeah, it doesn't really matter, actually. <sighs> it just has to be able to hold the board, you know, in that, uh in a slightly vertical orientation and we can have little you know snap it in place 
and then have the the pins in the center exposed um, although there are some pins that are not exposed completely so that's fine signum 4 is going to have uh, I don't know what you would call them access pins or just straight header pins eh, you know yeah, there aren't that many. I mean, each side has, what, 10? Yeah, definitely 10. <clears throat> so, just having 10 pins in a row on either side, uh, that map to all of the points is all we need, because then we can, then you can cut the board in half, and then just connect header pins straight to that, and connect that to whatever MCU you want. Oh, yeah, then I can mess around with putting it on the Douay. You know you want a 32-bit keyboard. <laughs> uh, that is so much I.O. you can add. You know, this is gonna be, that's gonna be like the numpad in the middle. Uh, it'll be like an M15. <laughs> With the floating numpad. Yeah, and that'll be the, uh, the inside numpad and, uh, the macro pad. Yeah, it's all coming together. <clears throat> Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I don't know why I have to record these. If I don't record it and I just talk to myself, it doesn't work. Uh, I have to record it. little road obstruction there. <laughs> if I have to record it, like if I actually record it, then I'm, I actually talk like I go back and forth about this stuff, so. <sighs> Otherwise, I don't know, it just doesn't work. It doesn't make much sense to me why, but whatever. <sighs> so I talked about the, the Douwe. Yeah, the Douwe macro pad. Well, that's kind of cool. I mean, at that speed, I can pulse and sense the keyboard and everything else. <clears throat> It'll actually probably be harder to to check the uh, the optical um, or the the rotary encoder. Put a big old turn wheel rotary encoder on there. That'd be cool. Oh, and then we could have full macro support. That'd be really cool. So the, the Due, so in this case, the Due would pulse and sense the keyboard, uh, would pulse and sense the macro pad that's sitting on top of it. It would have full ability to record input or we could do a mouse thing. The, oh, the, we could do the auto mouse in there as well. It can pulse and sense the auto mouse. And we could do full macro replay with the auto mouse and the keyboard. So you can you know, go here, click, type that, click. And then we'll have a display for when you want to do special stuff like add a wait timer or something. That'd be cool. Plus the Duet can do uh, USB host. Uh, which means... Yeah, that's like, that's just pure, pure software. Man, that's cool. I gotta actually do this. <laughs> there are so few instances of me saying, like, oh wow, it's, this is working pretty well. Uh, but I, well, bleh, but I'm actually, like, trying to make a new thing when I don't really need it. Or I don't really want it. <laughs> Uh, but the other thing is that the software, when the software gets good, I start to get excited again. Because, like, this thing, the Vexus has been, like, I think of a cool idea, and I'm like, oh, it would be cool if Vexus could do that. And I think about it for a few days, I'm like, uh, yeah, that's the right way to do it. 
and then I hop in, hop into the code, and blah, 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 and then publish it, you know, run it, and it works, and I'm like, wow, cool. Like, I can't believe this is working. <laughs> You're doing the prerequisite thinking or, or non-thinking about it. I don't know. It's, that's all that needs to happen. <clears throat> There's still some serious, like, auto mouse things that I, like, throughout my daily operations, I could use auto mouse probably several times a day. And auto mouse plus a keyboard, I could definitely use. So if I get auto mouse running on the Due, and then have USB HID input support, USB host support for a keyboard, then I can plug into the Due, run pass through on it, and then intercept for any kind of macro, and then play back the macros through the Due. It's cool. Alright, maybe I'll publish this.